So now we are live. So let me just Okay, so now what I will do is I'll make you the host. Donna, are you there? Yes, I am. It is Donna. Donna is here. So now I made you uh, made you the host. Yes, sir. Should I start the webinar now? Yes, you can. Sure, sir. Please. I have started the webinar. Okay. Uh, attendees are joined. So you can now uh, play the video as well as your clear uh, notice. So should I play it now or still four minutes left? We can play it then also. Uh, you can, uh, you can, you can uh, start it. it. It doesn't make much of a difference. Sure, sir. I'm starting. A very good evening, everyone. I am Dona from Planet. Planet is very proud to be part of this webinar. Planet is India's largest live digital CME and doctor genetic learning platform. Here, I am presenting a short video on Planet. Now, without any further delay, I would like to hand over the session to Dr. Chopra. Sir, over to you. Uh, thank you, Donna. Good evening, friends. Once again, I, with Professor Behel, welcome you in another series of Community Medicine Human Library Project. And there has been a lot of questions which are being asked again and again. What is this Community Medicine Human Library Project? When we started this, we at that particular point of time, we had this idea in mind that let us take the help of the luminaries in the field of public health, in the field of community medicine, and invite them to share their stories, their life journey, their vision, which otherwise you people can never will come to know. Why? Because whenever we go and meet in any scientific meetings or in conferences, we usually go there and deliver our content. Maybe few interactions will be there for a small period of time during lunch breaks or maybe during dinner, but that time is not enough to know the vision of a person who has risen to great heights. And th with this, today we are fortunate enough to have with us one of the brightest star of community medicine who is doing a wonderful job. And before I invite Professor Behel to introduce him to you, I will say a few lines as usual. This is for you, sir. Na pucho ki meri manzil kaha hai? Na pucho ki meri manzil kaha hai? Abhi to safar ka irada kiya hai. Abhi to safar ka Irada kiya hai na harunga hosla umrubhar na harunga hosla umrubhar ye mene kisi se nahi khud se vada kiya hai. So, with these lines, thank you, I, sir, for the kind words. Thank you, sir. I, I invite Professor Behel to kindly introduce one of the luminaries in the field of public health, Dr. Atul Kotwal, sir. Over to you, Professor Behel. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I speak anything from my side, I'd like to share a brief biodata of our today's uh, guest, General Atul Kotwal. 
So this is IAPSM Female Library Project. And uh, we are going to have a discussion on the vision of our guest today, Dr. Atul Kothwal, who has recently superannuated from Indian Armed Forces and where he served as a major general. Dr. Kothwal is right now Executive Director, National Health Systems Resource Center, which we commonly call as NHSRC. It's a body of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Sir, uh, sorry to interrupt. Can you please make this full screen? Sure. Yes. So he joined the field of medicine in 1984 at Armed Forces Medical College, Pune, graduated and then post-graduated from the same place in 1991. He is, to his credit, postdoctoral fellowship in epidemiology from All India Institute of Medical Sciences and Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. That happened in 2001 to 2004. He's a WHO fellow with advanced course on monitoring and evaluation, that is the newer advances in healthcare systems from Royal Tropical Institute, Amsterdam. He is known as a medical professional, a public health researcher, an able administrator, an educationist, a mentor, a teacher, and he has made vast contributions in the field of public health for over more than 37 years. And his areas of expertise include health systems, planning, implementation of healthcare policies, primary healthcare, urban health, epidemiology, health technology, implementation research, and interdisciplinary research. He has been an advisor for public health in Botswana, that is in Africa. He has provided technical support to government of India as OSD, OSD is official officer on special duty in the Department of Public Health in the erstwhile Planning Commission of India. He has been involved in planning and finalizing 11th five-year plan. He was involved in reviewing NRHM and conceptualizing urban health in addition to WASH and WCD related activities. He has a vast teaching experience to his credit. He is a UG and PG examiner for various universities. He used to be a professor in AFMC Pune. He has been a former professor and head Army College of Medical Sciences, New Delhi. He has attended more than 40 workshops and uh, organized many of them. And he has been a chairperson or plenary speaker or a guest speaker in more than 20 of them. His work speaks for him. He has got more than 100 papers published in index journals. He has published papers in proceedings of the conferences to the tune of nearly 50. Publications in non-indexed journals are six, and he has made contributions in books as chapters and monographs amounting to number eight, I mean eight contributions. He has conducted more than 30 research projects funded by armed forces. And he has conducted more than 25 such subject projects, which were funded by non-armed forces agencies. He has guided five MD students. And in addition, he has conducted in various other projects of ICMR and other agencies. As executive director of NHSRC, he has been guiding divisions in framing 
various national guidelines and policy decisions for health systems strengthening. PM ABHIM. Similarly, he is involved in 15, 15th Finance Commission. He is involved in the reformulation of Indian public health standards, public health management cadre, and national health accounts. He has been very well decorated also in armed forces as well as out of the armed forces. He was awarded Sena Medal for Gallantry in Armed Forces, in addition to Vishist Seva Medal and various commendations by the Chief of Army Staff and Army Commander. He was awarded eight awards for best research papers and two best research project awards. He is a recipient of Dr. J. E. Park Oration by Indian Public Health Association. And with this, he has got more than 140 publications in index journals. We extend a warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Sir, I remember the day when we had met in Tirupati in the IAPSM conference in the year 2005. And uh, if you remember, we had traveled together from Tirupati to Madras in a bus. And uh, then you had shared with us many new things which you had been doing. That time, possibly you were working on HMIS in Army headquarters, if I'm not wrong, sir. So we'd like to throw some light on HMIS, sir, which you had, uh, I think, single-handedly handled there. OK. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, I must uh, place on record my gratitude and thanks to Dr. Harvind Chopra, sir, the president of Indian Association of Preventive and Social Medicine, IAPSM, for uh, inviting me here. Uh, which I was initially hesitant because I don't think I have done much, but then uh, no one can say no to Dr. Chopra, sir. And, uh, and thank you, Dr. Uh, Rakesh Pahel for your uh, uh, the, uh, for initial introduction. And, and uh, I must commend your memory. I, I, I must, because I remember traveling with you, but, but I don't remember, you know, sharing all these details, which you remember till, till now. And uh, if you recollect, we had Dr. Sanjay Chaturvedi and Dr. D.K. Taneja also with us. And Dr. Dr. Sanjay Chaturvedi. Yes, we yeah, all yeah. four were together, so, along yes, with yes. Colonel Joshi. Along yes. with Colonel Joshi. Sir. Colonel Joshi, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, that, that's the time, you know, I did my study leave in our so-called postdoctoral fellowship in epidemiology from already Institute of Medical Sciences and JNU. And after that, I was posted as a Joint Director of Medical and Health in, uh, in Army, we have an organization, Management Information Systems Organization, MISO. Miso. That's part of the uh, DG Information Technology, which subsequently came up. Earlier, MISO used to be independent on its own. Uh, so as JD Health, uh, Medical and Health, see, we used to get the, it was when I joined in 2004, uh, in August, it was an archaic system of getting registers from all the 250 odd medical units all over the country of all sizes, from starting from Army Hospital, RNR, Command Hospital to even smaller units <clears throat> about the admission and discharge of the Army personnel in various hospitals. And we used to, you know, get the data entry done in Delhi with the team, entire team of uh, the, uh, the staff which I had, most of them civilians were paid from the defense establishment. And, and then a report used to be generated, which was generally about two years delayed because the, the, to get that kind of registers from all the, the agency, from all the organization, uh, vetting data entry, vetting the data, and as it is, there's a delay earlier. So annual health report was delayed by generally two years plus. <clears throat> so that's what, when I joined, we discussed, and then we you know did an initial review and all, and we thought of developing this HMIS, which we successfully did. And I think for that time, it was one of the biggest uh, HMIS in the country. Uh, and and uh, so, so uh, <clears throat> I must share with you the challenges also which we had. Uh, the, it was, a you know, that kind, it was the latest relational database management system using the Oracle 10 as the back end and uh, Java 2 Enterprise Edition as the front end for the internet uh, base. So Ami has its own intranet available to even to the periphery in today's date. But at that time, there were a lot of challenges available of the ability to intranet. It was only one connection in major units, smaller unit didn't have a connection. And, and that too, you know, the connection never used to work at most of the times. And <clears throat> so we made that application 
uh, and and we thought that people can you know do the data entry in that and as per the uh, right space approach anyone sitting anywhere can see the entire data as per whatever the his or her rights were like the uh, anyone who's heading the entire you know northern army command can look at all the uh, armed forces army personnel admitted any of the northern army hospitals or also admitted anywhere in the country so similarly sitting so at various levels we had given that rights but in the last moment i realized that you know the uh, in periphery there will be a challenge for intra intranet always so so let's have a parallel stand alone application also so we made the access visual basic access ms access based application also a replica of uh, that one <clears throat> and we gave the option to the units <clears throat> then we rolled it out so the, of course rolling out took a lot of we, we took a lot of time it took more than 2 years for this entire process because after developing then we <clears throat> went to about 18 locations where we field tested it we launched initial beta version few of the units and then finally we launched in april 2007 6 april on the world health day of 2007 it was launched and and uh, what saved us and what saved the application was the stand alone one because rightfully it just came to our mind that you know people will have challenges so it was that one only which was being used until 2015 the new application dhanvantri then took over and this one arogya so called which we made name got subsumed but for a software to work for almost 8 years i think it's an achievement itself because 3 4 years a maximum time when a software should be replaced by a newer one so thank you very much for reminding me that and i think it was a very good experience for me like sitting here now when we talk of digital health interventions uh, from nhsrc when we a lot of digital health has come up now so that experience has gave me a lot of insights where where i can now contribute and you know discuss with people that how 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 systems had to be made and how they have to be you know uh, field tested and then finally launched and what the user should get out of the system because uh, right now our healthcare workers are spending 40% almost of their time in data entry and you know uh, record maintaining but at the click of a button from the hmis or whatever portal they are using they should be able to generate the graphs and other you know decision support system from from that data only without any without much you know uh, data entry or uh, or making any changes on one click they should be able to generate graphs which would they could display that how many patients of so and so disease they saw in last 3 months or one year or one month how many are on treatment how many have you know uh, are improving on their treatment and and this kind of information should be available and this we made sure in that hmi that when someone does data entry the health uh, facility should be able to generate all that so so whenever i am asking someone to do a, some work for the health system he or she should be able to get something in return and that is a decision support system which we must, must give them so that that something which is a learning important learning for me and, and whenever we talk of the systems here i always tell everyone that let's have an offline version also because internet may not be available even phc now the 95% phc are connected but the duration of connectivity is available so generally we make sure that we now we are forcing people to make an offline version also of everything where at least basic fields are available to the healthcare workers and they enter that and later subsequent they, and, and this gets uploaded in the uh, main uh, this thing application as and when the internet connectivity is there generally at night all this gets refreshed so that's uh, thank you for reminding uh, dr rakesh and for you know uh, allowing me to share all this thank you thank you so much so come Wonderful. back to the Wonderful. actual convention sir that uh, we basically start uh, want to start with the, <clears throat> your memories of the beginning of your career so today i just diverted from that to now and to come back so we like to share how you started your career rather right from the beginning sir okay so uh, uh, before i joined the medicine i must share that i never wanted to become a doctor in first place so my 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 first choice was to become a fighter pilot and uh, i was very enamored with jets and all and you know fighter pilots requirement is that your leg length has to be a particular this thing and and so that all was measured i appeared for the nda exam and i cleared and uh, we went to dehradun for the ssb services selection board <clears throat> the entire batch was washed out out of 33 none none got selected two of us were called later on by the gtos the training or the, the instructors and the uh, assessors that uh, you know you have passed the pilot aptitude battery test which you can appear only once in lifetime and you were just borderline but somehow we could not you know make you through so you must try again so next time i went to alabad for the interview and i got selected 
And since I had appeared for the PABT and I selected, and I told them I want to join only a, a Air Force as a fighter pilot only. So the medical was in MH Alaba. They told me you are fit for army, but there was an old tympanic membrane rupture in school during boxing. The actual, uh, not fighting as such, but actual uh, official boxing, uh, where a drop of blood also had come, but doctor said it will heal out soon. So I was advised that, okay, if you want to join only Air Force, we are referring you to Delhi AFCME. So I was referred here. And uh, <clears throat> all audiometry and everything was done. And I was advised by the commandant of AFCME that time that, uh, son, you can join from, from our side. I can make you fit for the for fighter pilot. But with those pressure changes and all, you may, your rupture, drum may rupture again. You may get some infection later on. And if you are grounded, then you will curse us your entire life. So you join army. That is my advice to you. And don't even go for uh, Navy and all because you might then like to go for submarines and all, but you join the Indian Army. So you join that. So I said, no Army, so I I'll never join. <laughs> and uh, with that, then I started preparing for medicine. That's how I lost out also one year. So after this thing, so so in, uh, and that, then I joined uh, this thing and I got through in UCMS earlier days, which is now the uh, medical college, which is Trans Yamuna, which is, used to be in Sabdajang actually. Uh, and the other medical college I got through was in FMC. Uh, I being an only child of my parents, actually they were against my joining uh, Air Force as it is, so they heaved a sigh of relief and I said, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to you know, now, now try to become doctor. And I didn't tell them that I got through in UCMS because they were based in Delhi. And I ran and joined, uh, and joined FMC. So that's how my journey started in the army as, as well as in the medical college. And FMC is, uh, you know, like all uh, institutions in, which are in top uh, few of medical colleges. It's a great uh, place to learn. Uh, not only about medicine, but about life also as such and make lifelong friends. <clears throat> so 84, when I passed out <clears throat> that time, again, I had a choice as per marks and all to, you know, opt for Air Force or Navy. But by that time, one had learned much about the Army, Navy and Air Force and all. And as per doctor's life, I, I preferred Army. And uh, <clears throat> after internship, again, I preferred internship in Amala, not in Delhi. I'm very frank, though youngster, a lot of, I believe, young uh, uh, faculty and young uh, residents and students might be there online, but being an only child, uh, I didn't want to stay at home during internship because I knew they would expect me to be home in weekends or in evenings and all. Internship is the only time when you can learn, when, when you can learn practical, do something. Though in today's era, it's more of, you know, preparing for the neat PG or PG, yeah. PG entrance, but in our time, internship was the main time when you could work on ground. And learn. So after that, my first posting was, you know, in uh, Dras. That time, no one knew about Dras. And uh, I, 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 the Kargil war through that, I think everyone knows now. And there was to be one infantry unit. I was posted as a regimental medical officer. Dras is high altitude. It is about uh, 10,000 feet. <clears throat> but the unique uh, thing is that Dras is in a kind of bowl. With a wind chill factor, it makes, the, it, makes it the world's second coldest inhabited place. And the temp with temperature, those days going up to minus 55 degrees centigrade, not Fahrenheit, minus 55 degrees centigrade. And uh, we had a proper equipment there from the Snow and Avalanche Study Institute. And uh, we had seen minus 52 that time when I was there. Uh, so it was a very ex unique experience. And at the time when I was exposed to public health system also. In addition to, of course, uh, from college, we had gone to the Urban Health Center and Rural Health Training Center, which, uh, of, uh, uh, which was of BJ Medical College, which we were using those days. Uh, but here in Dras, there, there was a med one PHC and medical officer uh, was there and we used to interact on a daily basis. After a month or so, he says, Ki, I'm going on leave and there's going to be no one here for next one year because no one wants to come get, come on portion to Dras. It was a God for second place, basically, Dras. That time people used to say. And uh, but for, for me, the army provides you, you know, makes sure that you are provided with good quality life, accommodation, food. So, so you are, you are not uncomfortable and you can, you know, uh, be fully involved with your work and also enjoy along with that. So I started after seeing my own patients on the morning, I started going to the, uh, the PHC and started working there. The staff also accepted me and I became almost like MOPHC only the state government officials also visited. They also said, okay, you are the MOPHC as far as we are concerned. And my army also was very happy because they knew after this, I'm sitting there, people used to come there. It was very close to my unit, just adjacent to my unit, about one, one kilometer only. And <clears throat> that gave me, you know, the exposure to all the health programs and all, what is the role of a PHCMO? 
I even conducted deliveries within PHC in PHC when the road was blocked. Even at home also, one one family said, "No, we don't want to come there. We want a delivery at home only." But that that that's the kind of where I work with the community much more on ground. And uh, one incident which took place in November eighty uh, six <clears throat> was that uh, one convoy got stuck at uh, you know Gumri Draz Jozila uh, and Captain Board. It was a sudden snowfall. It was the last convoy carrying people from uh, entire Leh Ladakh area to Srinagar. Because either that either you could go by air from Leh and you, or you come by road. These are only two routes which are currently as it is. So uh, I led the patrol from Dras to Bhumri, 40 kilometers in fresh snow of six to seven feet. As walking is very difficult in that, and uh, managed to treat about 300 odd uh, you know uh, people who had varying degrees of uh, cold injuries because. It it used to be the winter clothing which they all had deposited in Kargil or Leh, and they were traveling in normal uh, shoes and clothes because they knew they had to go to reach Srinagar by evening, and Srinagar was comfortable in November, and so they had cold injuries when they got stuck and they had to walk from their stuck vehicles back to Gumri. That's a place between, between Dras and Jozila, uh, and then of course we evacuated fifty odd dead bodies of civilians, Dumka labor which was going back on leave, and and some some army guys. We evacuated some army from Captain Mode also beat up a helipad there. So and then we got stuck there for twelve days after doing our work. So for that I was awarded Sena Medal Gallantry. So gallantry in the medical corps are very few. That time I remember since Independence I was the fifty first or fifty second recipient of Sena Medal Gallantry as far well, and Army Medical Corps is concerned. That was in nineteen eighty eight, twenty sixth of January. I was awarded by President of India. Uh, so after Dras, then uh, I got posted to you know Sikkim, Gangtok, as a medical officer in the hospital. Two years tenure there, <clears throat> and then uh, got selected for the post graduation. And there also something interesting happened. You know, I'm I'm I must share it's very interesting uh, tidbits uh, this thing. <clears throat> yeah, I was very enamored with surgery, and you know, so and I was reading about critical care those days. So I gave my first choice surgery, second choice of anesthesia, and uh, my wife was in the also in the Army Medical Corps. She was Lady Harding Medical College, but joined Army at the same time. And she was posted in Gangtok. That's why after after my tenure in Dras, after we got married, and we I got posted to Gangtok where she was there. And uh, she got pathology in in Pune, and I got anesthesia in Delhi. And Delhi those days PG used to start six months later. We requested our DG that you know you can post me to Pune or post her to Delhi with our specialty. They said no, it's a career thing. You decide. So we can't change the place. Otherwise, you appear for the exam next year again. You got three choices chances with you. So we were contemplating what to do. Anyway, she joined in December uh, '87 and '88 uh, January when I was awarded this. Uh, and uh, in the at home at Chief is uh, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi who brought uh, Chief's wife. That uh, the Chief's wife brought Mrs. Sonia Gandhi. That see young couple, uh, captain, young captain of AMC is not given Sena medal. Both are in the army, and uh, so we were introduced to her. She said, "Where are you?" I said, "Gang talk." And where are you? She said, "Pune." So immediately within few moments, the late Rajiv Gandhi appeared. Because she signaled to someone, and uh, so he called the DG. He says, "How can they be, you know, at two different places?" So overnight, I got pushed to Pune uh, as a medical officer. <laughs> so there, there, while interacting with you know the post graduates with other departments and all, uh, next time when I appeared, I I opted for the preventive and social medicine. So even though with my merit, I could have got medicine as per because as you know what how the merit goes. Uh, but I opted for this because I realized that this is a speciality where <clears throat> one is working with the community, <clears throat> and FMC Community Medicine Department is very vibrant with its own museum and all. I think you, you both of you have seen that, and a lot of uh, who are there, uh, anyone who I would, uh, you know, exhort you all if you visit Pune, must visit Ampur Medical College Department of Community Medicine. So uh, now, of course, when I was there as faculty, we could get our own urban uh, rural health training center and urban health training center also. And uh, so, so, so that's what somehow interacting with the post graduates there while working as a medical officer for initial few months, I, I, I decided that okay, no, let me go into this specialty. So that's my how my special journey of the preventive and social medicine started. So 87 to 18, 80 uh, December 29, I, I uh, did my MD in uh, BSM, and uh, after that, uh, first posting Allahabad as a uh, deputy assistant director of health, then. Um, in army that's a unique thing that you know the preventive and social medicine public health is very strong <clears throat> we have we are command independent units where we have our own uh, hr for all the hygiene sanitation duties the anti malaria activity anti vector vector borne diseases 
and also we can conduct a lot of other research and implementation also in, in, in along with that we, we have uh, the arm, army personnel also as well as civilians also along with all the equipment and everything and we are advisors to the station executive medical officer who is the commandant of the military hospital and also station commander we also are in, uh, in charge medical officers of cantonment general hospital when i was there now the rules have changed so in Ramgarh, one could work again with the community as a medical officer community uh, cantonment general hospital i had mos with me and we could make a lot of changes there along with looking at the station also. And then I was selected uh, by the army for deputation to government of Botswana. So it's a, it's a three years tenure, uh, the deputation to government of Botswana. So I was working for both the government as such, as member of their various uh, apex teams of malaria, HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, and also attending a lot of the public health meetings. And but posted in the Botswana Defence Force as such. So so working with the uh, working with the Defence Force. So my I think uh, fifty percent time was the Defence Force. Fifty percent time was to work for the central government of Botswana and work with WHO in various projects. Even the bednet uh, insecticide treated bednets. That time we used to call uh, insecticide impregnated bednets. Now we call insecticide in, uh, treated bednets. Their trial and subsequent implementation in Botswana and also uh, working in Zimbabwe along with WHO Harare. And from there, when I came back, there was uh, one one year plus stint in the in Udampur again as a officer commanding of field health organization, where again one could do a lot uh, this thing of public health work. I was again selected. Uh, it's based on uh, ACR's uh, annual reports as well as uh, an entrance exam for postdoctoral fellowship, in which I decided to do in, epidemi in epidemiology. So I joined AIMS. But again, after about uh, one and a half years, I realized that I'm doing a lot of methodology. I was part of a lot of cross-sectional surveys, <clears throat> like injection practices in the country. Uh, the initial review paper is mine only. And we did a qualitative as well as quantitative study. I did uh, part of a lot of evaluations of iron folic acid and even uh, family health awareness campaigns of 1999, 2000, 2000, 2001. Uh, but then I, I realized that I, 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 I learned a lot of statistical packages there because one has to do uh, work himself with their only uh, strata, SPSS and all. Regression analysis, survival analysis, and a and, uh, lot of learning from the clinical epidemiology unit network, which was there earlier, Inclin network. Which is now somehow sadly we've lost out on CEUs. We have Inclin in India, the, but that time we had eight CEUs. So uh, Trivandrum, Nagpur, Lucknow were the good CEUs which were very very functional. And I remember going to these places for various workshops and even holding program evaluation workshops. And CMC Valor, of course, I spent one month with Dr. Sanjay Chaturvedi, who is now uh, he was principal of UCMS. Now now he's a professor in the department. Uh, and we learned, you know, uh, so all these software and survival and uh, regression analysis and all. And, and then I did spend one and a half years in JNU, uh, where, where I learned the philosophy of epidemiology. Uh, so that was also these two, I think I, I, I could, you know, uh, make the best of it where I learned. And then, of course, after that, I have just shared with you about my stint uh, about the Joint Director of Medical and Health. So from there only, I got selected as an officer on special duty by the Planning Commission. I just got a call in 2006, December, <clears throat> that I am so-and-so, do we know each other? I said, no, sir. He was Dr. N.K. Sethi, uh, who was senior advisor at that time. And he used to be faculty in NHRW. <clears throat> I said, sir, I met you once for, you, done, you, you had done an uh, evaluation of cancer control program in the country, and I wanted a report of that because that was not available anywhere. And we were doing, that time I was working with the oncology department of, uh, like uh, the B.R. Ambedkar uh, IRCH hospital, Institute of Cancer Hospital. Uh, and we did a huge, large trial in Delhi about the cancer uh, prevention and control. So for that, I needed that reference. So he says, uh, your name has been shortlisted as 10 names and all. I said, uh, the army may not leave me. You know, I am very, I would be very much interested. The army may not leave me. He says, no, that you don't, you don't, don't you leave it to us. If you are okay with it, then I'll process it further. February, I got a call from him that you're in the final three. Is it still okay? I said, sir, very fine. But uh, there's this, uh, you know, launch of this uh, program, same HMIS of the Arogya, which we, which I'm making. So it's okay. Uh, launch is when I said, most probably the World Health Day, April. That's what my DG that time wants to launch that. And uh, so he says, fine. And uh, April end, we got, I got the letter. And May, I was there in Planning Commission as OST, where I was there till December 2008. So, so there uh, one could, you know, um, um, finalize the 11th plan for the country, uh, the work work with the, <clears throat> the NRHM slide changes, which we present to, to, to then PM that uh, this thing. And then again, work with the women and child development uh, for water sanitation, hygiene, uh, and a lot of, uh, you know, the, there was a push for multiple micronutrient supplementation and those ready mixes and all. One could do, a uh, you know, the meta-analysis and show that what is the evidence and whether it should be used or not. 
anyway that subject is still open to debate and again a lot of uh, discussions are still going on about micronutrient supplementation in what forms and uh, from there i was was pushed to fmc as a faculty because we become become teachers wherever we are because all the hospitals were teaching hospital udhampur as well as army hospital rnr where i was there in delhi and uh, so there it's a five year stint i came back to delhi as director of medical research uh, involving the, the looking at steering the research of the entire armed forces all three wings army navy air force uh, and then i did i commanded a hospital in leh back to my you know uh, high altitude again and again you know dgfms that time our top boss of the armed forces medical services air marshal joshi i remember he called me to his office that you know <clears throat> you uh, since your wife is my wife was in army hospital delhi that time she is a hematologist since she is here so you can you know tell me name any hospital near delhi agra batra gwalior meerut any any place i'll post you there as commandant you must do one command uh, of a hospital so i said sir i would like to go to leh and if not leh then srinagar so he says why i said that's where the actual you know one can make a difference though though even these hospitals also the lot of this thing but that's where the uh, you know lot of casualties are there and in time bound manner you have to treat them evacuate them also and there are all those challenges which are there working that kind of environment either cio ops or in high altitude so he was kind enough to you know push me to lay and uh, that's I, i one could do a lot of work in my one and a half year stay over there i got the mri sanction and uh, you know the even the improvement of the um, cssd and also the uh, catering services and all which are very important for the, for, for the for the for the you know patient care as such modernization of all those and uh, from that again i was again brought back to delhi i was adjudicator of the all the disability pension which is an important issue for the armed forces and also even the civil uh, armed police forces capf all the uh, all this and uh, so there one could you know look at or revise all the guidelines and after that i was again uh, brigmed in jalandhar where i was you know supervisor of about uh, seven hospitals and jalandhar being one of the biggest hospital i was all those were, uh, were under me it has a technical control so there i got the cardiac cath lab operationalized in jalandhar got the art center operationalized there was a lot of waiting in uh, army hospital delhi for the uh, assisted reproductive techniques uh, a lot of people had to come here so there nothing for the Uh, north western part of the country so in jalandhar i could do that within one year of my tenure and then i was got posted as major general to uh, jaipur the south western command <clears throat> so there uh, the uh, covid gave gave me a lot of opportunity to work there and the first wave entire first wave management i think our command was edited as the best by the dgfms and also by the uh, army vice chief <clears throat> the number of uh, <clears throat> infections as well as the procedures which we brought in and a lot of hospitals we could upgrade uh, establish the labs even rt pcr or the cbnat and linkages with the you know rajasthan government and that's a time when i was sitting in office one day and i was uh, looking at surfing the net and i saw the advertisement for the post of executive director of nhsrc why nhsrc was close to my heart because when i was working in planning commission uh, uh, one of the advisors here Uh, was my supervisor in uh, JNU, Dr. Tupia Marotta. She was on leave from JNU to this place, and she called me up that we want to do a study on Ayush practices in the country, and we would like you you to help us in designing the you know study the methodology part as such. And that's the time I used to visit NSSRC, and uh, you know I sat with the team and designed that, and uh, we could do an excellent study, which formed the basis of uh, formation of Ayush Ministry also. It's in the Ayush Ministry document quotes that study actually. That's how why the ministry also came up. and and so so that i applied in that and uh, the interview was in may 2020 and i got selected so i took premature retirement from the army i still had some time to work so sir and uh, another board probably for the next rank uh, but then uh, one was into pure administration and all and nhsrc is looks at the entire health system for the entire country so i thought okay it's better to go there so i took premature retirement from the army and joined her on 15th of march last year 2021 So that's my entire journey, in fact, uh, till now. So over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. And it's very, very inspiring uh, journey. I will say. The, there are few messages which I got. Basically, you you talked about the statistics and and all those things. So, uh, uh, what is your message to the youngsters? How much is the importance of learning computer basics, maybe O level? <clears throat> or maybe you have you have to go beyond because ultimately now we are all talking of data and data ultimately is is going to decide what is going to happen in our country also 
so uh, what is your take is it it should be made an essential component of the pg curriculum or not uh, sir i think the uh, uh, we, again my approach some is the essential and desirable so as for when we talk of desirable first is that everyone must learn the statistical softwares must learn how to input the data and must learn how to analyze it it should not be garbage in garbage out because whatever command you give the spss or stata will do it in fact when i learned stata the stata did not have these drop down menus we used to we had to learn the syntax and then do it so we were very careful what to learn and what what kind of analysis what because we knew that if we learn a wrong uh, syntax unnecessarily we won't get a good result as it is so now of course the drop down options you can play and you can uh, give a command for any kind of analysis and that result will come out which many times one can't make sense of that so that kind of uh, own uh, self you know uh, capability of ev in everyone to be able to navigate these to analyze these and to interpret these should be there in essential when i come to that in essential is some people may not like to learn these softwares but at the same time they must learn uh, what is the output and how to interpret it so that they must know that should be i think made essential and for that and, and and especially not only this now we are going to digital health interventions the amount of dhis we have one must learn about the dhis not only about the what, what, what how, how they should be used how should they should be leveraged similarly it as such in health system how it should be leveraged to to for the monitoring and evaluation as such and also the normal processes monitor uh, the of the service provision as such but also should learn the philosophy behind it of the equity of you know the so that we there should be which of the, to address the challenges and and similarly when we coming back to softwares of what what are the harms of only using the quantitative only one must learn qualitative also so i think in desirable i would also place to learn the principles of qualitative because and i was lucky enough to learn qualitative in aims uh, and also in jnu and i could do a lot of studies also in qualitative and now in implementation research, research in nsrc Quantitative is an integral component of each and every study of ours, along with quantitative. So I, I think I, I, I hope I answered your question, sir. Yeah, yeah. Because why, why I said so? Because India is a vast country. It's a very, very heterogeneous country. And uh, when we when we talk of the facilities and the infrastructure which is available, of course you you say, you said it yourself that you your entire career was in army. And army there is no dearth of facilities and everything. You you will get it. But on the other end. uh there are states where you see the basic computers even are not made mm -hmm. available what to talk about the internet and other other facilities so that is again uh, because you are sitting at the top institute so are you looking at it uh, are you trying to do some kind of a situation analysis that how much uh, digital uh, empowerment is there first in the medical colleges itself uh so uh, frankly formally we have not looked at medical colleges as such but about the health systems i would uh, share sir that the capacity building and trainings are an ongoing process and today even asha can use all those apps and portals to for which she is on which she she, she is working all our anms chos phc mos staff nurses everyone has been trained and wherever i have visited in all i think i i have visited almost about 17 or 18 states in last one and a half years and and we gone on ground and my advisors of course have visited each and every district almost if you combine all their experience yeah. so so what we get from ground is the 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 there's no um, shortage of our capacity building and uh, that initiative that they, that they are fully conversant the the shortfall now is one is a multitude of applications and portals that is a challenge for us so we are trying to integrate now and uh, to do minimum data entry rest all can be pulled from the others as such and now with generation of ava id things will start the thing will start improving because at one this thing it can be linked it can link various apps and only one data entry has to be done the second is availability of internet uh, theoretically it is available everywhere barring 4 to 5% of phc sub center level it's a challenge at many states that's why we are ensuring offline version at evening and all whenever you get the internet creativity it can upload or whenever they are visiting the phc at least once a week they can take their tabs along and and it gets uploaded on uh, get gets upload on on its own on the system uh, but but then the government is making effort now through the bharat net 
where we are now asking data from the states and all and facilitating uh, provision of internet in, in all these places but yes uh, coming back to medical colleges <clears throat> definitely uh, there is another thing in medical colleges sir that uh, we the, the uh, mbbs md who come and join us or who are working in the development sector other 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 uh, organizations or even the ministry uh, they, they 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 learn when they come here so as you rightly pointed out they need to be taught when they are in medical college so a lot of these uh, it interventions because we can't do without it in today's scenario is we are now going to augmented reality uh, virtual reality and we are, there's artificial uh, intelligence also coming up. though i have my own reservations about the use of uh, ai in health as such but then uh, time has come we have to adapt some of these later on so but currently looking at all the it interventions and dhis uh, that kind of information knowledge is is a must there thank you sir so uh, that is what i wanted to bring it out in the discussion part that now it is essential if you want to pursue pg in community medicine then you have to be internet savvy you have to be computer savvy and you have to be software savvy because and if you are not able to do that then you will be lagging behind and that message must go across the board for everyone and actually problem is this that you see the 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 use of internet in in different stages in our country so mid level faculty still is not very well conversant with the use of technology that is another issue which is which is plaguing the system and the mid level faculty is somehow in my experience is reluctant also to learn all those things so that is another factor the third factor you you talked about sir okay, it is very very important the statistical analysis and uh, statistical analysis for that you have to have a basic good knowledge of because what you whatever you will feed the number the the application will give you the answer if your number entry is wrong then definitely you are going to get a wrong answer so uh, i think there is a greater need to uh, study the availability of the biomedical statistician which are there in the medical colleges because they are the persons who are going to teach all these software to the students so i think that is another area which needs a bit more of strengthening and bit more of training is required because these people are coming from a statistical background and majority of them are not computer savvy so I'll, I'll, what I'll, is your reason uh, so on that and what is your take on that sir before starts i would like to just go back to the uh, it part first I'll just share something here. I think there's. Uh, I'm not saying that I have done something unique and all, but a lot of us have learned that way, because we are from the era where we didn't have anything when we were children. We didn't have even uh, you know TV. So it used to be one TV in one uh, one lane, and we also sit together on this, on Sunday evenings to watch a movie. Uh, Pakiza was the one which I still I still remember, and uh, so our TVs had a screen also of different color. So and today we have reached a diff- uh, this place. We've seen everything. uh so uh, i i will remember when i was in ramgarh i thought i must learn computers and uh, that time it was uh, ms dos system and uh, there was one institute i went there once it was summers there was no you know as acs were not there but that chaps cooler was also not working and uh, so it was hot and the dos system to learn the commands and all after one this thing i gave it up i said no sorry i'm not coming from tomorrow so when i went to boswana so boswana uh, after about i think third or fourth third month uh, a chap came to me who was a sergeant havaldar uh, there in the uh, equivalent sergeant in the boswana defense force and he says naka naka is a doctor in switzerland in uh, language in boswana he says naka my computer is not working so my first instinct was tell him ki what can i do about it but then i thought ki uh, so okay so why uh, how, how should i help you he says uh, naka you come have a uh, have a look because all indians you know computers so i went there so what was that one day of ms dos what i had uh, uh, this thing uh, learned and he gave me a small book also on the ramgarh uh, that chap he said okay if you're not coming read this book so i read that in a leisure like a story book so i did, did nothing i just did all control del and his computer became all right <laughs> <laughs> it became all right and 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 then i reported it and everything was working perfectly and next day everyone was saying oh naka naka kothwal knows computers so, 
So I, I then I remember that British I was a member of British Council Library, which was 80 kilometers away. So I next Saturday morning I drove down to British Council Library. I spoke to the lady who was in charge there that I want to learn. She said, okay, no problem. <clears throat> she opened my email ID that time. <clears throat> she made me do it. So that's my email ID of Hotmail, which is still working till date. So <clears throat> then I spoke to her. I said, I need to learn more. She said, the uh, library, my work starts at nine. You reach here at eight on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Eight to nine, I'll teach you. So every Saturday, Sunday morning around for 80 kilometers, there meant about 40 minutes of drive. Excellent roads, even those time with, you know, fencing and all one could drive at 120. That was the speeds. Uh, so I used to go and took me about two months to learn. Then I purchased a PC that that time it was 5,000 Pulas of basic PC, which was equivalent to 60,000 Indian rupees in 1997, 98, which was a huge exactly. amount. Exactly. Well, exactly. Amount exactly. Of my pay. But then I bought it and I used to work at home. So, so that's why I think everyone has to be interested in learning. That's, that's the one thing that we, we, we can make it essential Absolutely. and desirable, but one has to learn, one has to strive to learn. And but yeah. for me, it was for my pride that everyone says Nakan was computer and I must know. And, and as luck would have it in 98, <clears throat> the local commander called me that, you know, our hospital has uh, need some <clears throat> upgradation and all. And there was a South African team, which showed me uh, that, you know, there's a land system and all. So uh, why don't you go and visit there? So I was sent to Johannesburg and I saw that land system and all. And when I came back, he said, you make a project and you have a land for our entire hospital. So that's the kind of exposure I got just because So I read more. I took some help and I made that project and it got fortified in front of me only. That was my first mm -hmm. uh, mistake, entire land for the hospital. And uh, so similarly coming back now to the softwares, Mm, Dr. N.K. Roda, hats off to him. He was one of my teachers in epidemiology. Uh, I was, you know, asked by preventive medicine people in uh, Center for Community Medicine that you're doing epidemiology under a clinician, not Malas. So I, I <clears throat> requested Dr. C.S. Pandam and others, sir, I am taking this considered decision that I am I, I'm a public health specialist. I learned public health and public health people only. I'm very grateful to, to all of you. But then I must get an exposure outside of clinical epidemiology as such. And I said, you are also a member of CEU. You also attend all meetings, which are twice a week. So I'm learning from you there as, as such. So <clears throat> 25th August, I joined. And uh, uh, first, 28th or 9th August, he told me that, you know, 27th or 28th of uh, September, we are having a program evaluation workshop in Nagpur. So you have attend. Karna. I said, okay, thank you, sir. And first week of September, he called me, he says, Ki, uh, program management workshop in Nagpur. I said, yes, sir, we have discussed about the ticketing and all. And uh, we, we used to have an office attendant. I said, I've given details and aapka bhi wo leke, we'll make it. He said, no, where is the material? I said, material? He says, Ki, you are an MD, PSM, you are attending means you have to conduct it. So hmm. though you come here for doing postdoctoral epidemiology, but you are supposed to know program evaluation. So I made the material program evaluation within one week of, the, of that workshop. And, and I was one of the faculty there and also attending. So similarly for software now, uh, the, when I went database of the family and awareness campaign was already collected already. So I was given the data. He says, you, uh, these are the initial results, which people have done. So regression ni hua to do logistic regression and strata software is loaded on your PC, which I've given you. So that's how it took me a week. I learned the strata and I yes. did the logistic integration and showed it to him. So you ha one has to have that uh, the desire right thing to to you know to do that. And I, but I would I think uh, through this uh, forum, I must convey to everyone that this time that we are adept in all the IT and, and also you know the uh, softwares. But at the same time, we have to learn the theory. We can't be doing only practical. Otherwise, we'll be reduced to technicians. So yeah. we have to learn the basic epidemiology research methodology. And uh, that way, General A.V.M. Balwar was here as one of the, in one of the previous sessions. Uh, yeah. so he, in 2007, uh, started the research methodology in uh, FMC. When I joined in eight, then I took it over when, I, when he went on posting. And uh, so in FMC, the, the thing is that first two months when anyone, all the PGs are basically uh, exposed to the basic biomedical sciences. And 60 hours out of those, in those two months is research methodology. 
and then then we discuss one of the, the vc mhs was was visiting us and our dean you know uh, took me to him and uh, told him about the research methodology workshop uh, this plus we started research methodology workshop for the faculty so he shared then we started rm workshops for the mhs and that was taken up by the mci and later on with the by the np uh, nb so the research methodology became a became a you know requirement for the promotions as well as the you know initial appoint and uh, the appointment so that's that, that i think that but that short two and a half days workshop only exposes you to what is there the rest all you have to one has to learn one has to learn the without basics one should not be just going to chart our spss the basics yeah. are, are a must of course nowadays the younger generation using r also that's also mm-hmm. software which has got lot of potential so its choice is yours anyone but uh, one has to without not without the theoretical background yeah i fully agree with you sir that that research methodology is something which is which is not taught not not taught at ug level and not taught at pg level also so that is one area which which needs we we need lot of strengthening and yes nowadays lot of workshops and trainings are being conducted by the various people so that's a healthy sign because until unless we are clear in basics only then we will be able to do good research otherwise uh, kp studies and all those things that will be limiting to that and uh, we will not be able to uh, go to the implementation or evaluation part which is important and intervention part is still uh, we are struggling we are not having uh, much intervention studies so these are the areas where yes we have to uh, work together and uh, then sir uh, another thing which comes to my mind is like you you went into army and uh, there are a lot of options and you have already discussed but the message which you gave is again important is that you have to work in the field whether you are working in the army or whether you are working in 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 civilian you have to work in the field because what you learn in the field you cannot learn it anywhere from any book so that is again uh, important message which you which you gave now coming back to nhsrc basically uh, what is the scope for the young professionals who those who pass out md yeah, as far as uh, this particular uh, organization is concerned uh, sir national system resource center was established as part of nrhm in 2005 as per the implementation framework it is mentioned that a technical body will be formed to help the nhm nrhm for all the you know policies and also implementation and 2007 it was established and uh, the currently i have eight technical divisions in, in nhsrc so i have a division of uh, you know community process and comprehensive primary health care which looks at all these options all these aspects and asha program of course nhsrc is famous for that uh then another division public health administration which looks at secondary care and also all the legal aspects uh the uh, quality and patient safety division looks after the standardization we have nabs standards are well known to everyone but i think uh, it's time we must inform everyone about the nqas national quality assurance standards the accrediting body of both nabh as well as nqas is same one single organization isqa and in fact the nqas uh, the uh, assessor training is accredited by isqa but not of nabh assessor training so we are better than the nabh and uh, all the public health facilities are accredited by the nqas so that entire program and uh, we are going beyond we are also go- now going into the, the uh, uh, antibiotic resistance and all also those aspects also are being led then i have a healthcare technology division which looks at all the technology in the public health system the technical specifications their evaluation health technology assessment and work closely with the icmr dhr also for the hta and uh, then the division of human resource for health and integrated policy and planning which looks at the entire nhm program implement- implementation plan framework <clears throat> which is again interesting if you have time sir i can brief about that yeah, also please. a little please, bit please please <clears throat> so then another division uh, looks after the there's a uh, uh, it division that is being created now because we realize that the chi which was working for us was another part of an mhw uh we need much more to work on it ourselves so recently created it division and uh, then we have a division of knowledge and management uh, knowledge management division which looks after the knowledge management and implementation research again formed within one year after i took over the proposal was approved and we have a healthcare financing division which looks at each and every penny what is what comes into health system from where does it come where it is utilized who utilizes it what all functions it is utilized for preventive promotive curative rehabilitative palliative so so that, and we come out come up with the national health accounts in 2013 14 we have been coming with national health accounts and now we are working with states to you know for their state health accounts i have a division of nhsrc in uh, guwahati 
to for the focus for the northeast western states it's called an any rrc northeast regional resource center again they are headed by director so that director and these eight advisors they they, they are they are equal and uh, of course there is administrative division again headed by a principal administrative officer so with this huge network and now recently uh, you know with our increased workload uh, i've been uh, given 45 positions more so our total strength will be crossing 300 actually if i include the external consultants and short term consultants so i also have the option of you know employing people as a, as, as a regular consultants senior consultant and lead consultants and advisors also as uh, interns and fellows and, fellow and short term consultants also if i want someone only for you know 11 months so that is there and external consultants specific job based if we want a specific job to be done we can employ anyone external consultant in fact we even panel lot of external consultants lot of faculty members are already external consultants with us and uh, we keep on inviting them for interviews for selection of consultants as such and also for our you know uh, radio 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 discussions radio. or even implementation research projects we involve them as uh, even scientific committee members or even as a you know for when we go to feed for data collection as supervisors so uh, so so the avenues are tremendous and uh, i would uh, you know if you all can just look at our website nhsrcindia.org uh, one will find details of all these divisions the work being done all the documents are available there because the entire policy planning is done by nhsrc and Uh, since last year nhsrc is not only working for only nhm we work for the entire ministry officially uh, our governing body is headed by secretary and he is as per his mandate last to last year rather uh, so uh, it it is uh, now we have been asked to work for the entire ministry so i am member of various you know even the medical education and even dghs where so the nhsrc is involved and <clears throat> so the uh, somehow i must place on record here the md uh, post md people are not interested in working in the sector because even you look at development partners uh, undp unaid uh, the uh, who or even uh, bmgf who of course there are but bmgf and uh, unicef again there are few but the others who are working on ground with states we have lot of uh, bds and ayush with mph most of the public health and also some mbbs with mph but mbbs md somehow feel that you know there too much of work the working hours are long and the commitment required is more i don't know they, 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 that's what uh, now I'll, i'll 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 give you the answer for that the problem now is sir that uh, in every state government uh, there is a uh, bond for two years okay after after uh, that's a policy decision which needs to relook at that basically you see once you pass out your md previously what was happening when we pass out our md the whole field was open now compulsorily you have to work within that system within that state for two years either you work there as a nsr or you work there as a tutor or you work there as a, as, as assistant professor whatsoever the opportunity is there but you have to work there for two years and if the initial two years of any student post pg are spent in medical college then he goes into a comfort zone and he will not be able to come right. out so so that that is the problem there are people who want to come out but then because the bond is there and if they come out then they have to pay a huge amount of money which okay. nobody will be able to pay uh, that, so that policy is to be relooked into and i'll request you whenever you get the opportunity so please talk about it because we are also inter interacting with the development partners and everybody is saying we don't have md community medicine from where you will get md community medicine because they are not allowed to work allowed by to. the state government so that's the policy that is the reason and very good students they then once they once you work for two years in a comfort zone sir then it becomes very very difficult to come yeah. out of that comfort zone and yes. the number of medical colleges which are coming up So yes, this is a false notion. I think I, this is a false notion that a lot of uh, Ayush and MPH are working because they are working because uh, they don't have the other option to work in medical colleges. And here the it's not a question of option. Here it's a question of compulsion. They are they are compulsorily have to work for two years, and uh, that is the issue uh, why why we are not able to uh, get uh, good MD community medicine people. working in the development sector so I, that I, that that policy needs to be really liquid to uh, otherwise wonderful your your insights and visions are absolutely uh, extraordinary and uh, you have worked a lot and uh, 
there is a question on SPSS, but but you have already answered that basically. And uh, anything so I, else you you, no, you are I, talking about the program evolution unit? You wanted to say you wanted to talk about that something more. No, no. That. First, I stand corrected here. Uh, once you shared this, sir, I must place on record this. Uh, so I think uh, when I'm meeting uh, recent secretary concerned, uh, we, we I, I'll discuss this. Uh, and obviously that comfort zone, that, that's what I want to convey that they all want to uh, join the, as faculty. And what you rightly mentioned now with increased number of medical colleges, again, uh, you know, a lot of vacancies are available and private also is opening up now district hospitals are being converted to medical colleges. So those faculty, those faculty positions are available. Yeah. And, and uh, so here as it is, it's a contractual post. So, but, but in NHSRC, we have done is we gave initial contract for two years and extendable. There are, there are consultants who are working since uh, many, many years. The pay scales may appear, you know, uh, like we uh, consultant is uh, ninety thousand to uh, one lakh twenty thousand. Senior consultant is uh, consultant is sixty to one lakh twenty thousand. Senior consultant ninety to one point five, and lead is one point five to one point seven. Uh, but for MBBS MD, we started a higher. That's uh, power is with me because uh, I only employ. I am the ACC appointee, appointment cabinet committee. The rest all are employed by the Indian HSRC only. And uh, so there we have made a considered uh, decision in uh, as per our policy in our bylaws uh, and where that we decided that uh, MBBS MD will be started for the higher. So we have consultants. In fact, I employed two senior consultants last year at 1.45. 1.5 is the upper limit. Started 1.45 MBBS MD and uh, consultant uh, one fresh MBBS MD at 1.15 instead of 1.2 again, the consultant is the higher. And then uh, annual increments. So increments are performance based. A, B, C, D. So A gets up to 10 percent uh, this thing and uh, that increments keep on increasing. There's no ceiling that you're, if your pay band is this much and you can't go, no. And increments are respective of the pay band. So the pay band is only for initial fixing. So one can go up to any, any, any extent. And uh, so, and 10 percent is not less. So 10, seven and a half and five, A, B, C. So depending on that, the same plus there are other facilities also, the medical uh, uh, insurance is there, there's excellent insurance is there, there's a laptop reimbursement, uh, 30 days leave, and, and working quality and you know environment. Uh, we have very open kind of working where divisions interact with each other. And uh, you know, in our in our in our meetings and all, uh, it's not that a junior consultant or a fellow has to listen. No. In fact, if they don't speak, then I or the advisors also ask them that you have to contribute, you have to speak. So if, if not, you know, uh, give your opinion, ask questions. So that's the kind of environment which we have where we uh, ask everyone to, you know, get involved fully and people get involved. It's a very interactive, very lively kind of uh, office which we have. And uh, because of uh, paucity of space, I've got another space in NHW complex only uh, where the entire basement of the NDC, NDC has been uh, given and there are 100 people I can accommodate there. So it will affect slightly that, you know, half of my team will be there, half will be here. But then again, it's just 100 meters away and a good walk for everyone. So that also we'll try to keep the interaction. Uh, so, so coming back to the, you know, the uh, evaluation as such. So, so the, uh, we, we, we right now are conducting evaluation of the Kilkari and, you know, <clears throat> mother child, uh, child tracking uh, system. And uh, so uh, I, I can't share the findings with you just, just now, the initial findings. And uh, I got to present it to the ministry. But that is there that whenever we present to the ministry, we give the exact picture on ground. There is no, you know, whitewashing of anything. And uh, so, so that way, like we, we, we analyze the uh, uh, HVNC, home-based neonatal care in urban yeah. areas. Uh, and, and we realize that it's only 20% is the full coverage, which we have shared with the ministry. We, we got a paper also published on that. So at, as an SSRC, that's the independence uh, I, I, we have got. That, that, you know, we tell the truth, which is there on ground. So currently, uh, it's um, uh, implementation research and also what we are now looking at, I'll share with you, sir, <laughs> that uh, the NHM, I, of course, everyone knows NRHM and then NHM in 2013. It's been a tremendous progress, a lot of achievements. So the overall aim is to, you know, provide equitable services of good quality and which are accessible, affordable. Uh, so as far as funding for health is concerned, uh, all three of us have been here in public health since many, many years. And a lot of the participants also are probably aware that till few years ago, ago, we used to lament that there's hardly any money in the public health uh, sector as a public, by public health mean public health services of the, of the country. Uh, now, no one can say that. 
it's the nhm fund which is increasing every year there the last year we have uh, pradhan mantri ayushman bharat health infrastructure mission which is the largest infrastructure scheme launched till date <clears throat> dedicated funds tied funds for the urban local bodies and panchayati raj institution and the 15 finance commission grants and of course emergency covid response package 1 and 2 one of course was more for drugs and diagnostics two is more for infrastructure oxygen centers of excellence uh, so that also you know is a permanent things which we which are which we are being which, which we are making uh, the drugs diagnostic initiative was started in 16 that was also coming up well and now the dedicated funds for diagnostics under the uh, finance commission so with this money coming from infrastructure for you know team abhim and finance commission combined is 100000 uh, crores over 5 years 21 22 25 26 which is a huge amount for states and um, uh, nhm as it is 35 37000 crore per annum increasing every year so so now the challenge is to work with the state so that implementation is done effectively and efficiently that's that's the main challenge policies the uh, we as it is we've been making policies in many years implementation yeah. is a major issue so we held yeah. six regional workshops with with, with the states and uh, we we you know uh, discuss the challenges which they are facing also success stories which they have and we also trying to leverage uh, it in that we we have made the performance management system portal where they are uploading all that with geo tagging so that if state says we are i am constructing a phc or a sub center here it has to be geo tagged that yes this is and with the pictures of you know various stages of construction so that kind of you know management monitoring systems are also there uh, using the technology Uh, but but again, uh, how how to if if you see the ecosystem entire with the PM Abhim Finance Commission and NHM combined, and uh, I, I, why I'm sharing is that it's very interesting for people to come and work with NHSRC. So that's why I want to share this that how much work is being done and how much is required to be done. Um, the the uh, the health and wellness centers have come up as at sub center level with a CHO as a leadership position, which was not there earlier, and CHO with two ANMs, um, one male, one female, or both females. Uh, and five ashas that is that's the primary healthcare team as a phc again to convert to health and wellness centers so we have a concept of comprehensive primary healthcare now so comprehensive primary healthcare again it's preventive promotive curative rehabilitative palliative all these packages are being you know ensured so we are only our focus till few years ago was uh, rmnch plus n so reproductive maternal childhood nutrition and uh, adolescent adolescent also we try to learn a lot of african things and talked about a lot of reproductive sexual health and all which boom ran and so we come back to our indian system as such which is now being a lot of uptake is there from adolescents which they are visiting the these clinics and all and, and so uh, now we are looking at the ncds now we non communicable disease we are looking at the injuries and critical care we are looking at uh, elderly and palliative care uh, met, uh, mental neurological and substance abuse i ent oral which no one had thought of earlier so this is being done from the sub center level with assured linkages to phc and chc and district hospitals and so now at block level which is chc not only chc upgradation they are there there the block public health units which are coming up it will have a public health unit it will have a uh, you know the the clinical part it will have the lab it will also have the it systems advanced system this will be linked again with the integrated district public health lab which is coming at district level district we have lot of labs tb has its own lab hiv aids has its own lab district hospital has its own lab then hiv then the, this uh, uh, hiv of course and the rt pcr for the covid that's another lab which came up we are trying to integrate them under one roof now which is again and and integrate health information portal ihip which is a much more better version of idsp which is assumes all these so and under the pm of me on a central sector there are funds for branches of ncdc and niv so with these linked with the state public health lab district public health and block public health unit and uh, diagnostics 14 minimum tests point of care diagnostic at sub center 63 at phc a lot of them at point of care and other than hub and scope model at vphu and public health lab at, at district and state level the entire ecosystem is made now to assure these services at ground level so that we don't have to rely on the private as far as primary and secondary care is concerned for tertiary there is a linkage with pmj for 40% of the population so that is also there you are also now discussing how you know the missing middle could be brought into the health insurance so that we add 30 40 crore more into that but that 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 will take time whether it should be you know some contributory or what kind of packages but but this pmj is there for the you know almost 50 crore of the population so <clears throat> 
here is a time where you know and, and of course linked with the digital health interventions we have uh, abhwc uh, abhwc app we have ncd applications portal uh, we have of course rch nixche and all those tuberculosis but all these are now being linked and ava is a great you know facilitator for that with the ayushman bharat digital mission in 2018 two ayushman bharat scheme was launched with the it has health and wellness center component which is 150000 by december this year it had the pmj component which is the insurance based 21 the ayushman bharat digital mission and also the pm abhim infrastructure which i just mentioned so these four pillars of course along with 15 finance commission ecrp2 and nhm3 seven if we combine together is providing the entire infrastructure what we were always dreaming of earlier you know that health system should be like this so that's it's it's there there are critical gate blocks coming up in 602 districts uh, plus 15 you know uh, central institutions uh, there are you know the diagnostics money as i mentioned earlier for the health and wellness centers and there are urban hwc is coming up at the population of 15 to 20000 which was never there earlier we had only urban phc the 50000 So to strengthen and polyclinics after every four to five PHC there will be a polyclinic where short specialist services also, and states have been given a choice whether they upgrade want to upgrade their CHC urban CHC or have to create want to create a district hospital sub district hospital as per their requirements. So that with the flexibility of course to states. So here is the time you know we need motivated uh, specialists and public health people to to work with, at national level in policy also to work in the with the states for implementation. anyone who's interested in implement that's why i see i said everyone needs to look at the various divisions which i have see what work they are doing and then apply for those positions and uh, and anyone who's interested can always just spend one month here with us we don't charge yeah. anything so we that don't charge what, anything that, that, someone that, wants to do uh, to learn that okay let me you know get exposure we'll get you for one month as an intern or fellow whatever you desire spend one month work with all divisions then you take a call whether you want to continue apply or not that that option is also there in fact one someone from nigeria has written who's doing phd in uh, I, i written it down in midwifery for internship option uh, please look at our website send an email the option is always there even for from abroad we are also collaborating with foreign countries we just signed an mou with the uh, denmark with national uh, nnf and we are doing a huge project with them uh, looking at you know the staff nurses and anms what are the training capacities right now what are the requirements for capacity building and because in addition to the policy we also involved in capacity building of the healthcare workers then with the uh, manitoba university of canada we are looking at implementation research and uh, in fact uh, we are having a meeting in canada in december first week to you know finalize all the uh, topics and also work on two three projects which we have already shortlisted we also working with who for uh, revamping the entire hmis also ncds continue of care because till now we were focused more of communicable you one visit that's all patient is out now it's a continuum of care the assured you know compre- initial screening assured di- diagnostics at that and uh, referral if required uh, treatment at a higher facility then after discharge coming back to the community follow up there that and in case of again emergency or any kind of requirement again referral upwards so that continuum of care loop has to be made now which is written in policy but is easier said than done so that we want we are doing implementation research so anyone is interested that okay no i am not interested in implementation or policy i am interested in only research so that option is also there with these 45 additional posts coming up there new posts plus as it is it's a young faculty there are three to four years a time when lot of you know there the people change because they want to uh, go up in life in this thing and that's what i also tell people that yes but there are a lot of uh, advisors here and consultants senior consultant lead consultant there who are there for 10 years plus because they are working and they are getting promoted in here only in hierarchy so that company is available and but with nhsrc stem one can get a job anywhere so anyone who leaves this place goes at a higher pay scale and goes to either who or even to development and the development partners with a bigger and many of them have come back also in a higher pay scale again <laughs> so so that's that's there but and and the options are huge one can one wants to go into only quality that okay i am looking only quality uh one wants to say only do community processes uh work with the jan jan arogya samitis with ashas uh, you know and and the panchayats that is option that is also we have a division uh, someone wants to work only in human resources for health that okay let me go into that then planning process which i mentioned earlier that uh, pip process what we have in nhm is very unique which was not there earlier so it started with nrhm 2005 the states we should be integrate district health planning earlier now it's not formal as such but district plans are made they are sent to state state collates them 
states send those plans to us uh, and <clears throat> those are evaluated by nhsrc and uh, then in the initial meeting with the states then there is a national planning coordination committee npcc what we call chaired by the additional secretary where these are finalized in a very consultative mode team from states are there we are there team from ministry is there so there is a three uh, you know kind of triangulation of views and discussion on each and every topic and <clears throat> then the budgeting is done and states are, is, is given that funding <clears throat> so in that pab process also there used to be up to 6000 budget lines you know <clears throat> till last year we were looking at it when i joined last year the npcc was delayed because of covid and i i joined on day 2 only i joined online and i was because let me just first observe so they were being discussed you know a lot of inputs were being discussed that computer okay what kind of computer what is the cost so we worked with the ministry in last one year what change we have done is <clears throat> we have reduced the budget lines they were already from 6000 they were out almost 1000 something last year we are now brought it to under 300 because lesser the budget lines more the flexibility to the states secondly we are not looking at inputs now we are looking at outputs and outcomes that you want to do capacity building you want to do this kind of diagnostics you purchase the for diagnostics the our hcd division already given the technical specifications uh, from gem you can use what and purchase that but now we are much interested is that how many tests have you done what is the you know outcome which will be of course later but out, outputs are immediately in one year and instead of one year pip we have done two years pip 22 23 and 2024 we already done there is a review now next month wait for 2024 states can ask for you know change in heads and all and some other fund but that's a short process instead of you know doing the entire thing again so that also we we'll save the time of states so it's a very interesting you know that uh, program implementation plan process also where all divisions get in involved everyone gives inputs and uh, so in an interactive manner with states the funding is done and funding i must share with everyone that we have a uh, there are central sector scheme and centrally sponsored scheme central sector schemes it's the cent percent funding by central government central sponsored scheme nhm is central sponsored scheme uh, so there it's a 60 40 or 90 10 bigger state 60% from central government 40% from state smaller states and northeast states 90% by central government 10% by the states that's that the amount of fund the type of funding which is done uh, but again we are again requesting states to spend 8% of their budget on on this thing which is lesser only one or two states are doing that they're doing 4 to 5% so there again that's why public health management carter has now come up Where we say that okay, let's give less fund funding from NHM for uh, uh, HRH. Let states have their own sanctioned positions and spend money which are permanent instead of contractual. But we must uh, you know acknowledge that 4.5 lakh positions over last 17 years under NHM have are people are working on contractual basis. Plus 97,000 odd CHOs in the last one two years from 18 to now. So this is the amount of uh, HR which have been funded by NHM as such. where we would now like like states gradually to you know take over these in a permanent positions with a short career progression and public and management cadre uh, we involved iipsm we had few you know representatives from iipsm too and medical college and certain other institutions also uh, so we had a initial uh, uh, brainstorming and you know consolidated discussion now next phase within few weeks we will we'll, you know uh, uh, next phase we will match the institutions with the states to work with state to create the public amendment card and for monitoring there are various mechanism but the immediate one which is now starting from fourth is a common review mission so that uh, i'll share with you somehow this time it's the you know it's on nomination basis so and the team number is also reduced so that's why we could not take the medical college faculty this year but then again we'll involve them in other monitoring procedures as such so back to you yeah thank you so much sir yeah, yeah. Yeah, Bell. Bell, sir, you wanted to ask something. You please go ahead. No, I just wanted to add, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, in fact, it has been so eye-opening for us, like regarding the very, very lucrative job avenues under NHSRC, that uh, possibly most of the public health people were not at all aware of it. There are so many job avenues. Are there so many diversity diversifications? Are there? within nhsrc and the type of the responsibilities one can take up i think uh, today's session is definitely very very informative for the youngsters in particular 
And the first thing I think what I should do tomorrow is to go and make my own residents very well aware about it, about the future beacons which they can see. Thank you so much, sir. Over to sir, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Akesh. Uh, yeah. And, and, so, and it's, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of flexibility also. So, uh, we, we, we give our consultants a lot of times, you know, uh, work from home also in between. Someone, some, someone says that, that this is the work which I, I have to do. I have to concentrate for six, seven hours. So I, so okay, work from home. By evening, you tell us what you have done. So that, that is the kind of you know flexibility which is there. Someone says I have some problem at home. I am going on leave, but I need one or two days extra there. I have less leave, but I'll work on those two days where I can you know spend some time with my parents. But I'll work for six to eight hours over there. Okay, you do that. By evening, you tell us what you have done. So that, of course, monitoring has to be there, but that kind of flexibility is also there where people are happy to, you know, work. So that's, that's the kind of, you know, uh, working environment we have. But yes, the, the working is there that many times people have to work on weekends. So what I have started when I joined here that uh, if someone has worked on Saturday, Sundays or in this thing, then we try to give one off next week, any of the days. So that each advisor has now been, it was not there earlier. I said some work-life balance also has to be there. So, so they, 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 they do, do that. Secondly, travel to states. In fact, everyone is very, uh, because without going on ground, there's no point in just sitting here and working. So that there's a, uh, a travel by air and of course, good amount for the hotel and all the good quality hotels where they stay. And when the states call like for CRM is a state which will make making the arrangement. So that, uh, that is also inbuilt to the work. So one is not, you know, only desk bound and, and just asked to just keep reading or keep writing. One is, you know, rather rather forced also to go and, and, and they go voluntarily. No one, I am not, I am not to force anyone. Uh, I have to many times stop people that know you, you have gone just now. Now you make a report and you can go in the next uh, uh, program. So at any given time, some divisions team or the others from NHSRC will be in some of the, one of the states. That's, that's a given. Uh, we have never sent person sitting in Delhi at any given time. There's some team is there and states, uh, there's a complete interaction with the states. What we have, I have done recently in last one year, we have also got development partners on board that let us work jointly at state level. Why should state have various voices from uh, USAID, BMGF, Japaigo, Billet? So, so they monthly, we have meetings with them uh, in a VC mode where they present what they have done in whichever states where they are working. And even for this regional workshops, we took them along. And we nominated that, okay, so you will work with these states in critical care blocks because you have the capability. You will work with these states in block public health units or integrated public health lab. You will help the states in infrastructure. We nominated which district. So that way it is easier now, you know, to work in a flow which will help the states eventually help the health system. Basically, it's a vested interest to ensure that oh. health systems come up and health systems are strengthened. Yeah, absolutely, sir. And uh, wonderful to know the work culture which is there in your organization right now. And uh, it's a flexible work work culture is also there. So that's also very good to know. The take-home message, another one is there that, yes, there is an opportunity for doing the internship. So uh, people can come and uh, work with you and learn. And more important than that is what, what you are doing is the collaboration which is there and which we have been dreaming Rather, we have been uh, talking with the development partners. So let's have, because there are so many development partners who are working in the field of health. So let's all bring them together on one particular platform with the professional association, which, which I think is the dream. Uh, my dream is there. Because if we can come together on one common platform, uh, because we had this kind of a uh, convening um, in 2004 or five, which was done by 16 international organizations together. So, so that way, if we are able to do it, so a lot of duplicacy can be avoided and a lot of uh, innovations and efforts which are going in the field of public health can be uh, transmitted to each other. And uh, of course, you will get a lot more energetic, uh, young and as well as mid-level, as well as old public health professional who will be willing to work to make a change as far as health of the people is concerned. Thank you very much, sir, for sparing your time. Just add on, and just yeah. add on one more, like uh, our recent, uh, very near future, our advisor, one of the advisors is falling vacant. So we also have a lien option also. Someone can come on deputation from government or from private can take a lien and come to us for two to three years. That option is also there. So so that, that I just want to share with you. That's it. Yeah. Thank you Thank so you much. So much. And you Thank have you so much. Sir.
already given us uh, so many opportunities and for the youngsters and this uh, this uh, interview will be there on the youtube uh, as well as on the iipsm e connect channel as and when we get it from the uh, clearnet so it will be wonderful for everyone to listen to your views your stories your vision and what you have been doing and what you have been achieving and what you are striving hard to achieve as far as the uh, betterment of public health in india is concerned thank you so very much for sparing your time and it's wonderful in insight eye opener to so many people to us also and lastly another website to look at regularly for the young post graduates that is nhsrc.org स्ट्रीमिंग Donna, are you there? Donna, are you there? Donna, are you there? Donna are you there we have to stop the live streaming I think we should leave the meeting then there is no other option right sir you leave the meeting first then i'll leave it hopefully it will stop right sir good night sir good night Donna are you there No, yes, kindly make me the host so that I can stop the live yes, streaming. Sure, sure, I will. I'm a.